Hi everyone, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mikey. Hi, hello, welcome. And welcome to a new sort of series chapter in my life and channel about navigating life after losing my job of 18 years and how all that looks, kind of next steps, and just going through the motions. If you haven't seen that video, I'm gonna link it down below. It's, I did a quick video about a little background story about my career and a little bit about the 18 years I was with that company and how it went out of business recently. And so a lot of us lost our jobs. Not a lot, all of us did. So yeah, I'm gonna link that down below just for a reference of this whole new series I'm doing. I don't even know if it's a series, it's just my life, you know? You know, one thing I didn't touch on that video was how it affected some of my bestest friends because a lot of us have been there for so long. You've met Lady and Holly on this channel before. Holly was there a year prior to me, so like 19 years she was at this job. And when I came in, I was in the photo department and she kind of took me under her wing in the web design department and taught me everything she knew. And I kind of was able to flourish and create create my own path in this visual creative space while she was still very much in the web design tech space. So kind of blended our talents to create a creative department that we both were in charge of. I forgot to mention that in the video because they are also going through it, they're hurting. And so it adds a layer of, I guess, just sadness and grief because it's not just me, it's them as well that are losing their careers and their jobs. And it affects a lot of people more than just me. So I feel for everyone too. I also mentioned in that video I was wanting to start out this year slowly. <laughs> I already had this whole like video in mind titling it like the art of slowing down and I was going to focus it on film photography and how we are currently just in this state of instant gratification when it comes to photography. I have this Olympus Mew right here and it is an old point and shoot film camera so it actually uses film. I don't know if you uh you guys remember film, but you put the film in there. It's all automatic. You just open it, click. Hi guys, what's up? Future Mikey here. I'm currently editing this vlog and I just realized that I wanted to refilm this portion of the video just because my tone is just so somber and I'm trying to tell you guys a story, but I'm getting bored and for obvious reasons, my energy levels are low here, but I'm in a much better space now. So I wanted to interrupt this and refilm and talk to you guys about this Olympus Mew which is a point and shoot film camera and kind of like the reasoning behind why I wanted to go back to film. So real quick, my film photography journey began in sixth grade. When I went to sixth grade camp, I brought a disposable camera with me and I was that little weirdo kid who was following my friends around and like taking a picture of them as they're walking into like the sunrise or sunset. Like I'm, I'm literally like taking a picture of their back versus like, oh, hey guys, take a picture. That was kind of the first sign that I was into photojournalistic photography, which is basically just capturing things as they happen. So I would say that was like my first taste of my photographic journey. Also, I think the main reason that I really wanted to get back to film was because we are such in a digital age where everything is so instant. You go out to dinner with your friends, you take a picture of your food, you post it on your stories. There's nothing wrong with that, but I think the memories are lost because we're posting it right away. So if you're taking a picture, posting it right away, and engaging with it while you're still in the act of that specific event, it's no longer really a memory. You didn't take a picture of a memory, you're instantly posting it. I don't know if that makes sense, but that was my thought process behind going back to film because I can just take this with me anywhere, snap pictures, have rolls of film, and then one day just develop it, and then you can relive those memories. And again, nothing wrong with instant gratification with photos. I'm still gonna be posting my stories about it, but I think this will give another layer of just core memories that you can look back on when you do develop your film. I was actually talking about this with Donnie, and he had mentioned that Kim Kardashian does the same thing, and. I did not see her video or hear her talk about this, but he had mentioned that she keeps a point and shoot film camera in her bag and just collects film and one day she'll just develop them all and kind of go through it and yeah, so I think that's pretty much the same idea. So again, just being able to look back at memories through film. So that's the whole idea and concept behind the video I was supposed to do and I'm just integrating it into this video. Okay, so with that said, we're gonna get back to the vlog and in the next clip, you're gonna see us going to a photo walk because we're gonna go to North Park and just take some pictures and see what we can grab with this guy. All right, so here we are, North Park, beautiful neighborhood, kind of known for like, you know, nightlife, younger families, a lot of food spots to eat at. But all the homes have like a lot of character, you have a lot of craft, crafts, blah, 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 I can't talk. You have a lot of craftsman style homes, which is cool. I like this one. Oh God, look how pretty the flowers are. Gorgeous. That could have been my first photo, but 
cute crafting style homes and then obviously there's a lot of fixer uppers as well here is another store that got really popular back in the day they're called pigment they do home goods they got a lot of cute stuff in there and a lot of like really nice plants all right so like i said i want to start off this uh sort of plant wall right here it has a bunch of succulents and if you look up you see the blue sky too which i think looks really pretty first photo let's see how this goes see all that cute pottery all right so there's a cool wall right here i want to take a picture of let's grab this guy real quick Opportunity, but let's just, yeah. All right, so there is just something about this wall right here that I really like, so I'm gonna snap it. All right, so if you guys look at that right there, I felt like that was sort of interesting, as well as the architecture up there. This used to be, I think, the post office, and I think they turned it into either condos or apartments, but I wanna take a peek of how this blue thing looks from the bottom. That might be a cool angle. All right, there's such the cutest house in back of me. It's like all purple and stuff. So I'm gonna take a picture of that. Hopefully uh, don't get in trouble for invading someone's privacy, but we got a cute house. We're gonna take a picture of it. All right, how can I forget to take a picture of the iconic North Park theater wall? I gotta take a photo of that, right? Hi guys, we're back home now. Change into my comfy clothes because we have nothing else to do. Also, just gonna have me a little glass of wine. I used this wine the other day to cook. This wine I bought, it was like pretty much the cheapest red wine I could find at the store because I just wanted it for cooking. So we're just gonna drink it because you know what? That's our life right now. Also, the dogs are currently with the mobile groomer outside, so waiting for that to happen before I start cooking. Mm. It's not like I don't even I don't know how to explain why why I'm even trying. <laughs> but anyways, I'm like actually gonna cook right now. Let me show you guys what I'm cooking. So Donnie saw this recipe, and it's like a TikTok recipe using the Red Lobster Cheddar Bay Biscuit Mix. And it is a chicken cobbler, basically. And these are the ingredients. You kind of just put them all in a bowl and put them in the oven. So I'm gonna start shredding this chicken and then I'm gonna put everything together. Okay, and we're back. I went ahead and shred up all the chicken from that rotisserie chicken we got. And I melted the butter. So we're gonna kind of just mix all the ingredients. I actually have my LG Stand By Me TV right over there. I'm gonna follow this recipe, which is a little bit different than the recipe from TikTok that went viral. We're gonna put the butter in here. Ooh, a little bit didn't melt, but that's fine. Oh my God, it is focusing on my wine. It's not working out too well for me. Kinda like how my life is going. Okay, I think you guys can see me here. Hopefully you can hear me. I think this is a better angle so you can see me as well as the dish, so. Okay, so now you get the chicken and you just throw it all in here. The girls are like literally right next to me because I've been giving them a little bit of the chicken breast, but you make sure to suck out the, uh, the salt from it. It's kind of gross, but. All right, so we have the chicken in here. I'm gonna play this just to make sure I have everything correct. So the original recipe calls for um, carrots and peas, but my grocery store didn't have carrots and peas, so I went with the carrots, corn, green beans, and green peas, which I think is actually better because you're getting a little bit of variety of vegetables, so. <coughs> Cut this bad boy open, boom. And kind of just mix this in here. You see that? Okay. Make sure the layer is somewhat even, but you don't need to really mix anything and incorporate anything together. I just wanna make sure I have enough room for everything. Okay, let's see what's next. I'm gonna pause you guys. Okay, so now we're basically just gonna season it with whatever you wanna season with. And right now I just have garlic powder, onion powder, as well as some seasoned salt. And then, you know me and my spice, so I'm gonna add some red pepper flakes. I don't feel like you have to do a lot because obviously a lot of this is already salted and flavored. And also the original recipe calls for two cups of chicken stock. She's using one. I'm just gonna go in the middle and go with one and a half cups just cause I don't want it too dry. So we're gonna go in with 
one and a half cups. And then a whole 10.5 ounce can of cream of chicken soup, but you have to make sure it's the condensed version so that you get the creaminess of this. Yeah, I'm like a full on cooking show right now. And then we're gonna whisk this together to incorporate. Oh my God, I can't imagine being a cooking show because I'm supposed to be filling this in with some dialogue, right? <laughs> like, ooh, when my grandmother made this for me back in the day. <laughs> Obviously the wine's kicking in. So we're gonna mix this all together and then we're gonna play and see what she's doing. Pour that over the top, but do not stir. In a bowl, you're gonna add two Okay, pour it over the top, but do not stir. I just wanna make sure to get this incorporated and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're gonna pour this on top. Do not mix. Oh, I definitely think I like pouring this first because all the juices are gonna get inside the filling. Okay, and now I think is the main ingredient, the star of the show. And you're gonna get two cups of whole milk and the cheddar biscuit mix. All right, two cups of milk. And then the whole box of this, I think the recipe calls for two cups and this is just pretty much right at two cups. And then there's also a seasoning packet in here we're gonna use. So I would say it's pretty much two cups, so let's just throw it all in there. We should be adding half of the seasoning mix to this and then we're gonna save the other half you're gonna put it in melted butter and then baste it at the very end with butter and the rest of this, so. And then add some cheddar cheese. Okay, so the original recipe, I believe does not use cheddar cheese, but she does and hers looks delicious, so we're gonna go with that. And she's using about half a cup of cheddar cheese, so we're gonna do half a cup. Mix this all together and then we're gonna throw this on top right here. Okay, let's pour this over. Do not mix, do not mix. <gasps> Whoa! Okay, looking good. All right, so we're just gonna throw this in the oven, 350 for an hour, and I will check in with you guys when it's done. See you in an hour. All right guys, quick update. The bun is in the oven. What is it called? The cobbler is in the oven. TikTok, the chicken, the, <laughs> oh my God, the viral TikTok, Chicken cobbler is currently in the oven and it should be ready in about 35 minutes. Um, I'm currently now logging on to my YouTube studio to look at all the comments that you guys have posted for my last video of losing my job. And honestly, they're so freaking amazing. Like, I am, I go. Beyond anything I could have asked for when I asked to like comment down below if you guys have any advice or just like success stories about losing your job and just comforting to know that like strangers are willing to give you advice and give you support and just be there for you. And, like some of these comments are like the most kindest comments I've ever read on the internet about anything. So just the fact that like you guys care enough to share is it's beautiful, so I'm just here gonna try to do my best to reply to every comment. And then also watching some YouTube right here. It's my girl Kim Tai. Hey Carlos. So yeah, I'm just gonna take a few moments to try to reply to everyone. This is the power of YouTube and social media. And for me, it's it's more YouTube because you really get to know your creators. Like social media is so instant. I mean, not social media, but like Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Those are just so instant and honestly filled with a lot of trolls. Don't get me wrong. YouTube has a lot of trolls too, but Instagram is different. Like no one really pays attention to comments. And it makes sense because it's a 30 second clip or a photo, you can't resonate, you can't connect. But on YouTube, you have a way to really connect with your audience or strangers with something you're going through. So this is why I'm really like, in love with this platform. This is the best community you can ever join if you are a content creator and want to connect on a more personal level with your audience. Yeah, just wanted to share that with you guys and thank you for all your love and support so far. And yeah, let's wait for this TikTok cobbler. <laughs> No, no, Donnie hasn't watched my video yet, so he's watching it now. Here's how it's looking. I think what I'm going to do is baste it with butter and then get the top really crispy. 
So this is the butter mixture with the leftover seasonings and then put it back in the oven to get a little bit more toasty. Dogs love the heat, so the girls kind of stay behind the oven because <laughs> they could feel the heat from here. Huh. Okay, back she goes to get a little bit more crispy and crunchy. All right, here we go. We're gonna try it out. Watch out, don't touch the uh, glass. Mmm! You like it? Are you crazy? That's bomb! Oh my god, it's so good. That's really good. Like for an easy, simple recipe, 